Simba is the Swahili word for lion. The Simba Circle is a creative new approach to inner city youth ministry for at-risk boys. Our next story takes you to an ELCA outdoor ministry experience you'll never forget. Some of them don't believe they're going to live beyond 21. They've lost hope. I don't believe that God meant for them to be these hardcore, reactionary creatures. I mean, they're meant to explore. I'm prisoned and concentrated for not thinking before I act. I've been in this type of facility since I was 15, and I won't return home until I'm 19. Go to the funeral homes, or go to the emergency rooms in these cities. Really get a dose of what we're talking about here. I think they're going to really enjoy this self affair this time. No! Let's stay there! I got my fishing pole and I ain't ready. He's going to be on his own. He's going to see life differently. Yeah, I'm going to be careful. You be careful. They got mixed feelings getting on this bus. And some of them out of fear. You know, because some of them have never been in an environment with all males and strong men. And they don't know what to expect. One of the things they know is that they feel that there's going to be love. They feel that there's going to be adults that actually care for them and will listen to them. Uh, they feel there's going to be fun, recreation. Uh, they feel that there's going to be some sense of unity. We're going to go swimming, hiking. I'm going to Disneyland! <laughs> Their thoughts are, Club Med, here we come. Until they get off the bus. <laughs> it's a whole other reality. Stay strong and tall! The word Simba means young lion. One of the reasons we use that symbol is obviously we, we tell our young folks that um, you know, understanding that in their context, wolves travel in packs and lions walk alone. To a lot of the black youth, it's a chance for them to get all the, the bitterness, anger, frustration out their system. What started as a living room rap session has bloomed into a two-week mountaintop experience with children recruited by 30 congregations from 14 cities. At the camp, Christian principles are stressed through disciplines gleaned from African rituals. Young people are able to work through their anger, attitudes, and gang influences often associated with inner city life. Brendan Moore shared these thoughts. They say, don't walk into the light, don't die. We don't need to cry. They say, don't walk into the light. Don't leave. We want no tears on our sleeves. They say, don't walk into the light. You need to know, your little brothers, that when you curse one another, you are releasing toxin into the soil of our relationships. When you act in an unkind and uncaring way, you are releasing poison. The learning and the initial experience can take place at all ages. And when we're talking about at-risk kids, uh, kids who are living on the edge of a lot of potential destruction of different kinds, there is no perfect age. As soon as and as often as help can be extended and involvement and embracing can be done, it's the right time. I think black shows like the blackness of people, and I think red shows the blood everybody has. As a nation builder, I'm a mentor, a group leader. I'm their brother. Sometimes I'm their father. Sometimes I'm the good guy. Sometimes I'm the bad guy. But it's all positive. I'm here to add to them. Some of these kids don't get a chance to see what care is and what love is about. And when they come here, they get that. You ever got a catfish? And not only that, have fun. They're proud of this group of guys. They come a long way. We got the, the, the roughest of the rough. The seven principles are Umoja, unity. Kuumba means uh, Kuji Chagalia, self determination. I forgot it. What Kuumba mean again? Ujima means collective work and responsibility. <laughs> we use the seven principles of Kwanzaa, which is called the Naguza Saba. Kuumba means creativity and Imani means faith. And we teach those principles to our kids and drill them in them and then make them live them. Kuji Chagalia and Umoja. <laughs> Another African ceremony involves water, 
It's a thanksgiving to God for persons who have gone before in life, faith, and the struggle for human rights. The other ritual we do each morning is libation. The African word for is tambico, and that's pouring water on this plant. Please stand tall and ready to receive your ancestors. And what we do is that we're asking for our ancestors. We're calling our personal ancestors into the room. Every one of these kids has got personal friends they're calling out. They say, don't go, for they fear what they don't know. They say, don't walk into the light. They say it's not your time. They don't know your time, your place, or how you feel. Maybe you welcome the light. In order for these children to really be themselves and to be their productive selves, they need to see themselves as they are, are created, not as something different or something extra or something particularly strange. Maybe after two years of going to this camp, they are tremendously different people. More of who they are is now coming to light. Who came to us is not the person that they were. Now the person that we're, we're dealing with now, that's who they really are. The little boy in them comes out who's scared of worms and don't want to put the worm on the fishing bait. The quietness comes out, the reflection's able to happen, and more of who they really are, who God meant for them to be. Almost every kid goes through some sort of personal transformation, and we see that happening during the process too. Not just tears always, but other types of emotional responses. It's kind of ironic, but when I see them shed tears, it makes me smile, you know? They're showing their feelings, they're being themselves. Although he's going to go home and perhaps participate in the same stuff that he's done before he came to camp, there's something in the face that will never be the same again. The stretch of his smile will be a little broader. The deepening of his eyes will grow a little deeper. His hue will be different because there's something about this camp experience that spiritually engages them in a way that they are profoundly affected for the rest of their lives. To you, the light may be the only way out. To you, the light may be the only true freedom. Freedom from the darkness. Freedom from your own tears. Freedom from your own fears. They say, don't walk into the light. 